Okay. I can see your butt. <laughs> well, we see me. See my booty. Huh? You can see me. You can see my booty. Yeah. So <laughs> do we click live? You you'll see you it should be a thing that says live. You'll see it. Because I see okay. it now. I'm looking at it. All right, you guys, we're starting the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to What the Female Podcast. I'm Nikki Pam, one of your hosts. And I am Miss Monique. And I am Hope Flood. How y'all doing? How are you guys doing? How was your week? Yeah, it was fun. Week. You guys I, I didn't, you know, I'm a mom, so, you know. What did he do? How was your Mother's Day? I, I did. I got up, I cleaned up, and... um. Uh, I made some spaghetti and things. So you, know, you cook for yourself? Yeah, sometimes. Uh huh. And I made some spaghetti, and then I um, and then my son came later on, and he ate, and he brought me my little gift and stuff, some flowers and a little stuffed animals, little treats, and said he loved me, hugged me, and and then went on back to his bitches. I'm so sick of him and his <laughs> That's funny. He well, did. my mother is uh, in 3,000 miles away. Okay. So I sent her some dinner via Uber Eats, honey, free of charge. Well, that's, that's cool. <laughs> that's, that's hot. I like that. Yeah, and I got her extra for the next day. Here, mama, get you some extra food. Why was it <laughs> for free? the next day? Well, well free of charge to her because it was Mother's Day. That's why I said free yeah. of charge. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm not mad at you. Happy dinner, mother. You know, what can we do in these instances? Like I can, couldn't go shopping for something and send it to her. I know, and I pick it at Amazon and mail it out from me to you, mother. So I had to- You know Amazon her. is worth $2 billion now? Uh, say it again. Say what? Amazon is worth $2 billion now since the coronavirus. And y'all know well, that of Prime is not really Prime. We're paying that whatever hundred and something of a year and and he, they stopped that prime because literally we're not getting for four stuff. days. Yeah, it's taking a while to get the stuff. Yeah, I got well, something I'm waiting on now. Should have been here today after I ordered it. Prime, and then they had a the nurse say, "We just we just took your money out your for your prime bill." Yeah, I ain't getting prime like, at all. So shit, that ain't the point. Shit. Mm -mm. Yeah. I, I, no, oh wait, so they said they said they took off your they took what? They did took off what? Ma? The the prime, I said they just took my money, you know, for the bill. Oh yeah, yeah. Mine's do every month. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I said, and I just got a, a email talking about, yes, thank you for your your prime payment. I'm like, yeah, where's my prime delivery? Right. Because <laughs> because I literally ordered some too and it, it came days later. I was really irritated by that. Yeah. You know, like we getting jipped. Yeah, mine is with um my cell phone. I get it free with my cell phone. Uh, when I changed over to another cell phone, I get free Prime. Really? Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah, I have free Prime and stuff. So yeah, no, I'm not so, mad at you. You know, um, so I'm I'm smoking today. I'm doing I'm doing um CBD disposable CBD pen today. Ah. So wait, after you, well, you disposable how? Well, after 250 puffs, you just throw it away. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a disposable pen. And so it has a, 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 like a liquid in it, pretty much, or, or what, it, what, you know. Mm -hmm. It's what? like all the pens and stuff, it's just disposable. Yeah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to do those all the time. I like them. Yeah, and this is that one's pineapple. So um, the what the female is sponsored by High Hopes Biz for all your cannabis and CBD <laughs> needs. <laughs> Shameless. Plug. I like my High Hopes. You, I, I love that. So High Hopes got me one point five million dollars. <laughs> are you? You should try to get one of them business loans though. I spent yeah, one point million about. dollars yeah. on High. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yes, I stay high. With this going on, I, I, you know what? In since the Corona, I've never, I, my OCD as a is at an all time high. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I 
I could, I could drop something on the floor. I'm picking it up. I could spill something on the counter. I'm picking it up. I didn't, I didn't clean up and wash clothes so many goddamn times. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of doing any of these things and stuff. It's like, oh my God, I didn't do uh. this before that. I'm not a dirty person or nothing like that. But mm -hmm. golly, you just clean it up and, and it's on the surface. Now they say it, it's in the eye. Now they say it's in men's semen. I'm like, damn. You they said it's in men's semen? They said it's in men's semen. Now you can't fuck all Oh, the Lord. It's ridiculous. Too much. Oh, your respiratory going to go bad because you got some dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What happened? Like, it was well, a respiratory. I ain't having sex anyway, so it don't matter. So, you know what I'm saying? You ain't having sex anyway. No. But, but, but what happened when I sent you that honey, though, Pam? Okay, so at first I was like, it's not working. Okay, right. and, and then like maybe about 30 minutes late, 30, 45 minutes later, I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> it, it was almost like, I don't know, I, mean, I, was, I, I knew I was horny, but I didn't <laughs> know that I was, I wasn't shy, I felt it in so long. <laughs> you know what I'm so I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I, I know a couple people bought it from you. Uh, did you get any uh, response from that? Yeah, my girlfriend, uh, she bought some. She's on the other side of menopause. See, there's two sides of menopause. There's one side where you don't want to fuck at all, and then that's, that's what ruins marriage. <laughs> you notice people, you know, remember back in the day, you would see women and they'd be married for a long time, and then all of a sudden, after 25, 30 years, they're getting a divorce. It's like, why are y'all getting a divorce? Y'all been together so long. Right. And it's, and it's basically because um, the woman is going through menopause and she turns into this uh, she devil bitch and she don't want to yeah. fuck and everything. And, and I don't even think half the time we really know when we first go into it. Yeah. Because I think, yeah, we're getting the hot flashes and we're doing whatever, but you're not even like aware because I have this friend, I, I, I have to, I'm gonna have to have a talk with her and say, uh, bitch, you in, you in menopause. Just to let you know. Because yeah. you snap it. Yeah. And then the, so, other, then the other side is where you want to fuck like you 17, 18 years old. I'm on that side. Party all the time. Yeah, I'm on that side. <laughs> Hello, me. That's me. Yeah. I'm on that side. Gushy, gushy. Yeah, that, right. and, and, and then you're producing. You're producing more testosterone, so that's where the hair comes from and everything, and you just, the wind could blow. You're like, oh, can I get some dick? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it is just really uh, a situation. <laughs> it really hilarious. is. Hilarious. It, 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 I, I have, I, and I'm, I'm very sexual, but I have not wanted to fuck like this since I was in my I, I ain't gonna say I've been fucking since I was a teenager, but I have. But I'm just saying, I ain't wanted to fuck like this probably since I was 17. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> Your well, sex drive is high. Sex drive is very high. And, you know, men our age, a lot of them can't keep up with that sex drive. I it's, know. It, it, okay. it is the worst. It is the worst game that God plays on us. And God is the biggest comedian because he plays this game with us or whatever, mm -hmm. where we have been taught our whole lives as women to keep our, our, our dress down and our panties up. Right. And then men have been taught to conquer as many women as they can. Mm -hmm. and, and, so us, then, right. and so then, you know, then when we get, and so we don't know, we don't have a sexual you know, prowess about ourselves. And then we get of age and now we want to do it. We didn't want to do it, didn't want to do it, didn't want to do it, didn't want to do it and stuff. Men want to do it. And now we want to do it. And now our men are impotent, old, they fucked out, they right. fucked out, you know, and shit. Right. And it's, it's, it's like God, it's the biggest, it's the, it's the, God is the, God is the biggest comedian ever. Boy, he is not funny. <laughs> I think like for women and to, uh, when it comes to sex too it, it's very mental also you know yeah. you know what I'm saying like you have to play, uh, have foreplay with us before we have sex usually if you with somebody or whatever I mean I have to be turned on by you for, some, for something you know I'm not just Me like well, I mean it is rare that I do look at a dude I do know if I'm a fuck or not but I don't know you know you know, oh, we all know. I know, I know. I can't. You short. Say it again. You know, every single time if you gonna fuck him or not. Yes, I'm right uh, by looking at him. I don't. Me too. Mm -hmm. I don't. Me too. You don't. 
not every single time. There's some guys that are like, I, I'm not going to fuck them. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, it just happens. And then be like, damn, I'm glad I did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not me. I, I, be, I be licking my lips like, mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm glad I you going to get it. <laughs> okay. That's one yeah. thing I, you know, yeah, I, I think that's one thing I know that, you know, we have to, okay, you know I'm getting high, so y'all gonna have to forgive me. I'm gonna forget shit. <laughs> you start to go off? Mm -hmm. stuff or whatever. I mean, forget shit and be stuttering and stuff like that. But for the, for the most part, though, you know, I think that they say women know if we want to fuck somebody. And men can talk <laughs> themselves out of some pussy, can't they? In a heartbeat. Yes, they can. In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Oh, they don't look at them like, and it'll be something stupid like, I'm, for me, like, if I'm with somebody and, and they just not productive, I, that turns me off. Like, mm -hmm. I need you to be, I don't know, Mr. Fix-It or, or something or just cook or take out the trash or you have to be doing stuff. But if that dude's sitting on the couch and just, um, you know, playing uh, video games, no. What if he's sitting on the couch and he just fucked the shit out of you and it's like the aftermath? The after, well, hopefully we we connecting and being together. Monique, your um uh audio's off. Unmute your audio. Um, but uh yeah, I mean hopefully he's you know. <laughs> mm. well, what 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 I can't hear you. Can't hear you. <laughs> Are you on mute? Are you on mute? I, no, 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 I'm sitting here like I was trying not to bust out. Well, I mean, I, I think I'm going to be upset if we, we have sex and then you go play video games. Right. Then I'm going to feel like the side piece. Like, I'm going to feel like, no, really? The side piece? Yes. Okay. You're not about to go play video games after we have sex. I'm sorry. It's not happening. Okay, but but why would you be the side piece? Because the side piece gets the best of the dude. He don't, the side piece gets the She don't get an emotional the connection. She don't get a connection. Yes, well, she yes, she do. Yes, yes she, she do. You guys, <laughs> that's, that's not the purpose of the side piece. The side piece is to get him off and get have sex, right? No, you, no. You would, you would think, and that's what it's supposed to be. But I think men, men get emotionally attached before women do a lot of times too. Mm -hmm. And men fall in love; they just don't admit it. Well, see, the <laughs> thing so? is, what happens is they know that you know they have a woman so they start talking about her with you and they're able they feel like they're able to now be able to talk about the bullshit the bitch did it you okay with it because you right. already know you were able, yeah. and then that's where that emotional connection comes in and they call you more because you're gonna sit there let them play their little game after they fuck the shit out of you mind you <laughs> then chit chat about the bitch and you get the cheese go home shit's off his chest he got the fuck he got the play. He might even got something to eat out your ass. Who knows? <laughs> he go. Nah, see, at, okay, at this point in your life, at, at our ages, you know, we're all in our 50s, are you guys down for that type of relationship at this point? Not at all. I don't think my husband would allow it. <laughs> well, I, I, okay, say you weren't married and you were out dating, like, single like me and Hope. Or, I know what you mean. You know what I mean? Well, could you be in that type of relationship at this point? I no. figure I got a good 20 years, 20, 25 years left, you know, if I'm healthy. I need to start building on something, you know? Yeah, I can do it. Not at this no, age. It's too much of a game. Trying to... It is too much you know, of a game. I, I, I do too. I, I, you know, you... I, I think that a, a lot of men in our age group have... Uh, our men are broken and emotionally unavailable, Pam. That's, and they and they don't want to be responsible for us at this point yes. in their lives. And, and when say, I say, when you say responsible, you mean they they don't want to care about us. A lot of them they want to they want to fuck. They want this. They want that. But they don't right. want to be responsible for us. Mm -hmm. Look at the lady who just got killed, Breonna Taylor. I don't right. know the circumstances of it or whatever. But black women are some. We're the most unprotected species on the land. Right. And, 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 and everybody loves the black woman except our own men. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we're the most unprotected species. You, and, you, and what I'm saying that is that they, they don't want to be responsible for us. They don't want to protect us. 
they they don't want to listen they always think that we're we're being um negative uh, nosy and don't want them to go anywhere and things like that so let me start with negative. Uh, let me let me start with saying that they don't want to be responsible in other words say you got a situation with your kids mm -hmm. a lot of them just be like okay go handle that and and holler at me when it's over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right yeah. They don't want to be like, well, let me go to the school or what's going on or this and that. Or you leave their house or whatever. It ain't no call me when you get home or let me know you made it home safely sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Or, or you leave their house or whatever. They don't even walk you to the car or you're at the club, you know, whatever. You notice how black men, when they bring white women to a black club, they protect that white woman. They hold her hand. I got to go to the bathroom. He walks her to the bathroom and stands by the door. And stands there and waits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They mm -hmm. don't do that for us. When the last time you seen a black man walk a, a black woman, his woman or whatever, to the bathroom with, like, you know, walk her to the bathroom and stand there and wait for her? Well, I mean, I feel like it's few and far between. Okay, maybe not the bathroom thing, but, like, sticking with her... You know, I know you're saying going shopping or or just being with her. It's few and far between, for real. Right. It, it right. really is. And you're so right. Send, I see so the black white thing, but there. I see the black black. Yeah, they'll send us out there to shop with the kids and, and mm -hmm. do whatever unprotected. After a few hours, they don't even call to see if we're okay. We come back home. Some of them don't even want to help us bring the bags in, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And it's like, we're so unprotected. Right. you know or whatever and and the, and then this responsibility of caring for us and stuff and that's why i say our men are broken and are mostly unavailable and i could yeah. only speak for i can only speak for, i agree uh, uh i can only speak for black men because that's all i've ever dated mm -hmm. and so i don't know other races and how they are whatever i think we probably need to get some other people on sometimes and be able to talk or about in the chat room you guys tell us what you think if you've dated um you know outside your race you know and how were those men are they were they the same if you dated black white no, not. you know hispanic or whatever what was the difference in the men like when i ask brothers when they date white women and other races i say what's the difference and they say stuff like well white women don't ask us where we going Oh, I, why does, as a black man, why do they get so upset with that? I'm just trying to make sure you're going to be okay. Like, if something happened, I know where you at. I'm not going to be calling. How do they have to know fucking good? That's why. <laughs> and we know it. We can smell the shit. Mm -hmm. Well, not only that, we have a, we have intuition. And we use our intuition. And you hanging out with Tyrone. Tyrone ain't shit. Tyrone got you in trouble. Tyrone right. tries to hit on me when you're not around. Tyrone puts you down. You know, Tyrone says certain right. things or whatever, but you don't hear us. You think that that's your boy and this and that. And then we're trying. We, well, we he love is his boy. boy. You know, we because love he can bring a friend over, Tyrone. Right. He can bring that girl, mm -hmm. that hood rat over right. there. And Tyrone right. ain't going to say shit to the girl. To the, right. to the, well, I don't think he's trying to hit on you. <laughs> exactly. But I don't think it's just a, on a cheating tip. I think that right. they, say they don't want us, you know, they don't clock us. We we are concerned about you with all with the climate of the world today, what's going on yes. with every time you leave the house, we're concerned. You're at risk. Yeah, I know you're saying for the shooting or, air or just anything bad could happen. Like anything. just like that, like you said, the, the lady, uh, what's what's her name? The one Leona that Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, Taylor. They, they laying in bed. You know, he grabs a gun. I mean, if, if somebody's coming busting my house, yes, you're gonna grab something to protect you and yours. Right. You know, and now he in jail. It, it just it doesn't make any sense. And see, and they and, and they hear, uh, if, like you said, if a white girl asks them, not an issue. A black girl asking, we nagging, why you in my business? Why blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no. Nah. Like, we are really literally concerned because we as black women understand that once you leave this door, it could go bad at any given time. And your Anything. life can change like that. And, and white girls yeah. don't know that because they haven't grown, they haven't grew up in our culture and they no. don't know, you know, whatever. And, and, I, and I, I've been around some brothers who be, be, are married or with white girls and they call and all they day call. too. But they call to be like, baby, what you want for dinner? Or I just called to check on you. This is how you doing. But it's different when they do it. But when we call, 
what you calling for? What you nagging me for? Right, why are you texting me? Yeah. Well, so, uh, Seymour said the boyfriend bonded out. So do we know what he bonded out for? And I mean, he's probably still has to go to court, right? See? Yeah, what, what state are they in? Uh, was, it, was it Texas? And, and Steve, what state was it? State was it? I guess well, we can look it up. What, what's the, what happened? What's the situation, Pam? Because I just saw it. I didn't read on it and catch up on it. What is the situation? All I know is, is uh, they were doing some sort of raid, but they had the wrong house. And they were in the bed, and he got up, grabbed his gun, started shooting at the police or whatever. And, uh, you know, it went bad. It, oh, she said Kentucky. Um, and so, uh, well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, it can happen anywhere. There you go. But you just said but you know the wrong house this that and the other that whole thing I, it, it's happening too much now so he wow. went to protect okay so did his, I his and know. her him him with him and his you know what i'm saying and he starts shooting at the, whatever and then they 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 get him and they take him to jail and i think she died right well <laughs> did she, she yeah. got shot by the police in the process most likely but see the police didn't identify themselves well, and then too, I mean, it's, it's almost like you feel like it's a break in. Right. And I don't know what the gun laws in Kentucky. And I'm, I'm sure he had a right to defend. The boyfriend shot a <laughs> cop after Brianna was shot eight times. They arrested the boyfriend. Wow. They shot wow. her eight times. There was no reason for that. No. And, and scary. And see, and, and like you said, as black women, we understand when our men go out there that it could go bad. And they just, you know, and, and, and I, I feel like even with this Corona thing, a lot of black men are acting like, even though we're the most, uh, you know, we're getting at the worst, or, and, and us and Hispanics, they still feel like, like, A, I'm overdoing it, or I'm doing too much, or I'm too protective of myself and my family or whoever else. And, and, and I don't understand that mentality. If you know we are dying at higher rates, why? Are you telling me I'm doing too much and I'm I'm over exaggerating my you know trying to protect myself? I don't get it. And and we're dying in higher rates because of what Mo? You're in the uh, medical field. Is it because we have pre-existing conditions as black people? It's because we eat pig feet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but I'm yeah, sure. the pig feet gives us skin because of the collagen. Mm, but it's bad for the heart. Right. <laughs> I'm serious. That's what it's all about. Sugar is the number one cause of cancer. Number I, one. I and what do we care? Everything. Diabetes. Yeah. And heart. 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 Sugar. We love some sugar. We do all yeah. kinds of sugar shit. We need our I sugar some, iced tea. We I need our sugar, 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 sugar. I go from <laughs> sugar to salt. Sugar to salt. Salt to sugar. See, salt, salt is my problem. Sugar. Oh, wait, I check this out. So, Rabia, hey, girl, how you doing? Um, the person that the cops were looking for was apprehended hours before they ran up in Brianna's house at that. What? So they don't the person, but they still running up in this house, this, this, you know, these people's home. That is crazy. Beautiful sister, they want too. Beautiful sister. A yeah, beautiful sister, too. Yeah. Mm hmm so the bro so the guy he had a right to defend his family. Absolutely. I, I mean, I would. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know the Kentucky uh, gun laws, but I mean, had it been Atlanta, it wouldn't have been. I mean, you know, because I know you could. Well, we have some of the worst gun laws here in California. I wasn't for gun reform when uh, Charleston Heston and all of them were, you know, uh, ahead of the. Uh, uh, National, what is it? National Rifle Association, NRA. Yeah, yeah, whatever. That is. Yeah, I was, you know, I was like, why are they trying to get guns? But I get it now that I'm, I'm learning how to shoot and going to the shooting range and and things like that because our laws is that we don't have a right to carry state. Right. You can have a gun in your business and at home. Right. Mm -hmm. It has to be locked up. Right. It got, but no, you can have it on your person, on your personal property, at your home or your mm -hmm. place of business. Mm -hmm. But when you go out. You have to have it in your car in a lockbox. So, you know, right. we're, known, we're known for drive-by shootings and carjackings and stuff. California is number one for that. So that doesn't make sense. I've got my car in the trunk or the back seat in a lockbox. So I got to tell the killer, wait, hold on. Hold on, nigga. I'm wait, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. 
Oh shit, I dropped my key. Let me get my key out so I can kill you. Right, right. Yeah, I dropped my key. Give me a minute. <laughs> so I'm I'm for a form of that, but even still, if somebody comes into your house, it's it's a thin line because if they come to your house and you don't feel threatened mm -hmm. and it's just like they came to steal a TV mm -hmm. and they leave, then you, you don't have the right, if they leave and get out your door, you don't have the right to go out on the sidewalk and shoot them because they weren't threatening you personally. They just stole a TV. Right, right. Oh my God, this is bullshit. <laughs> These laws are bullshit. <laughs> so, are you, so basically, are you saying, would you want to have the right to carry? Would you like to be in that type of state instead of what we have going on here in Cali? Well, absolutely. I want to have the right to carry, but I also want to have the right to carry in the state I'm in so I can protect myself because based on the laws. I'm from South Me Central too. LA by, by way of Inglewood. I've never wanted right. to Me carry too. a gun, never have carried a gun, but the times are different. And being a yeah. single woman out by yourself sometime at night coming from the comedy clubs and things like that, then we need to know how to shoot and we need to know how to protect ourselves. Yeah. And, so, and a yeah. lot of times, even me going to the shooting range is cool, but it's not a real life situation. Right. You know. Right. But what about self defense classes and all that? Do you feel yeah. like? Me and I my we talked about was, taking a class. I know we did. I, I know we yeah. are lazy. I've taken self defense classes in my time. You yeah. have. And when you think about it, to me, I feel like you're not going to think about any of those steps, but you do. You literally do. Because the way that they teach you, they come at you in such rage uh -huh. that they want you to throw up the techniques and the things that they told you to do. Uh -huh. And it will. Only if they teach you in such rage. Because otherwise, some people just panic and they just do anything to get away. Right. Or you just really have to think about someone coming at you in rage. And right away, it's like a muscle memory. Right. It just happens. Right. You start doing what the hell they told you, but I've always felt that if I'm in that situation, thank God I haven't been, mm -hmm. that I feel like I'm just going to loop, forget everything, and just do everything I can to get the fuck out of the situation. Right, Because I'm, right. you know? yeah. I'm that chick that if something's going down, I'm just running. I ain't trying to see, oh, what's going on? I'm, right. I, I, I don't care. If everybody running, I'm running. I don't even know, need to know why. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, but what right. if you got on heels? It's hard to run in heels six I inch. Wear, I barely wear those. Like, trust me, I wear fake heels. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't I'm wear right. heels. We always right. got heels. I wear heels. What we going to do? Yeah. The thing is, me and my girlfriend, Portis, we were going to do a self defense class. Mm -hmm. And I have bought all these self defense things and stuff or whatever. Y'all know, Pam, I got it on my keychain. Mo, y'all know I got every self defense. I yeah, went through a lot. And she showed you her keys. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> I got it all kind of shit yeah. on my phone. Matter of fact, I'm going to go and get it. But what we were doing, she found a friend who was a, a former sheriff, a police officer who has a whole um, farm, like out far, where it's like a whole tactical uh, type of setup. Right. And she went out there and they had a simulated thing. And the first simulator you went in was an active shooter at a school. And you are actually wow. going into that situation where kids are screaming and hollering and everything. And this active shooter is coming into the classroom. She said it really wow. wasn't real. It was fucking real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because you need, and when I went to the gun show in, in, in Little Rock, um, one thing about white people, they teach their kids how to shoot at an early age. Sure they do. These kids are five and six years old, know how to shoot and know how to dismantle and put together guns. They know the differences in between the guns and everything. And what one guy was telling me is that he's taught his wife to shoot his kids and he actually teaches them how to shoot in actual situations. Like if you're in the car, you need to know how to shoot in the car. You need to know how to shoot wow. at the restaurant. You need to know how to shoot in 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 in, in places at, at the store at the mall. You need to know when those things and situations come up or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, and that that's that's the hard part is knowing how to shoot and when to shoot and not to panic. And the right. thing with, with us as women, like you know, a lot of women work out and they they walk and jog, and you have those earphones on. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And right. You, swear, you can't hear. You can't hear. Nobody you can't hear. coming up on you. Right. You know. Right. And, and, and not going to the ATM late at night. Um, um, being aware of the surroundings. You know how we get in a car and we don't take off. We'll text or try to put a number, right. address in. That can right. that somebody can run up there because sometimes you forget to lock your door and somebody can want run up there, you know, that way and stuff. Um, my girlfriend, her mother got killed in her apartment building because like mo eighty percent of of crime is committed by people you know. Right. And when I yeah. say you know, yeah. meaning they come they become familiar. Like Pam, you live in a building. Yeah. Are waving at the neighbors. Hey, how right. you doing? And they right. like, oh, and they know your they schedule. Go. They watch you come and go. Right. Right. Or or you see them at the store. Now you see them at the store. Be like, oh, that's my neighbor. They cool. You know, that's my neighbor. Mm-hmm. Then the next thing you know, they knock on your door. Right. You be like, oh, that's yeah. my neighbor. They must be cool. And that's what my girlfriend's mother did. Yeah. And, yeah. Was yeah. and then he and then he and he murdered her. What well, kind of happened? Right. My cousin did that. So <laughs> what happened? Um. My cousin was in jail for like 20 something years. And um, my, you know, we, our neighbor, uh, he basically, he got out, he stayed with my parents. I wasn't living with my parents at the time, but uh, basically he watching the next door house, you know, blah, 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 you know, getting a schedule. Basically he went in and killed her, sodomized her, came back to our, us. We not oh. know, we hear there's a killing in the neighborhood, but the cops immediately suspected my cousin because a he was a, and 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 as a, a family members we did not you know we didn't know that you know that's how he get down because he's family you know well, we just trying to help somebody coming out of jail so yeah I mean he and he did it and you're right and it's people that you know and then she what happened was while he was robbing her she walked in on him and and said you know what let's let's, let's just please don't hurt me I will you won't tell Naomi and basically he's like I can't do that I can't let you go I gotta kill you. What? And they threw my whole family around. Yeah. Yeah, my, my girlfriend's mother, they did a they went on an episode of, you know, one of those shows, the one of them mm-hmm. shows. And so she worked third shift. And um, so she would, you know, he figured out when she come and go. But she seen him at the store, young dude and stuff. He was living there. He had moved in with his girlfriend. And then they were going through whatever. And so she seen him at the store. Okay, hi, da da da, or whatever. So he knocked on her door and forced entry. I think he probably raped her. And then he wrapped her up in a blanket and threw her in the trash because the neighbors saw that. That no. he took her Then he. This is how he got caught. He took her car and was driving it around and went to the ex girlfriend's place of work. Uh huh. On the front and everything. That okay, I got a new girlfriend. Da 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 da. Whatever. They never found the body, so they couldn't give him the death penalty because they didn't have the body. Wow. And 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 then the car was found miles and miles away, burnt up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. So they can't in some states what that have the death penalty, in some states that have the death penalty, they can't charge you with it if they don't have the body. Right. Well, they charged my cousin and he's on death row, so mm. you know. And what state was this, Pam? Here, Kelly. Oh, here in California. Damn. Mm-hmm. Opposite. Yeah, my, my brother on death row, Pam. Really? Yeah. Up yeah. in San Quentin? Yes, that's where mine is, my cousin. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 probably know each other. <laughs> I don't probably know each other. No, it ain't but like about, it's, I think it's about 10 or 15 of people on death row, actually. Oh, is it? That's it? Well, then they, yeah, because mine definitely on the. Uh, they be up there together. Yeah, I'm sure they know each other because they're all on a certain floor on their own. And they have to be locked in 23 hours. They get one hour to come outside. Well, did y'all see how the uh, inmates are trying to give themselves corona so they can get out of jail? <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't say, how are they, what are they, what are they injecting themselves with something like, and where do you get like a bottle of corona? Like, how are they doing this? Are they That's just what like, I want to know. rubbing up on each other, hoping one of them got it? I, I, I'm tripping off of that whole thing. When they said, I said, what? How but, do but, they do that? But, <laughs> the thing is, but the thing is, this virus has already been here. <laughs> so we're all going to test positive for it at some point because it just didn't get here. Now the social distancing, you can't be around people as of two months ago. So before that, were we not infected? Before that, when we were I all... Like, yeah, people I knew had it. It doesn't I, make sense. I, 
And I always thought maybe that's what Diddy's uh, ex, I mean, baby mama might have died of. You know, because remember they were just saying pneumonia and it was just sudden, like she was okay one minute. And that's the thing about Corona, you're okay one minute. And the next minute you can't breathe, can't walk, can't, you know. Right. Look just kill you. Feet looking funny Attack and whatever else. Right. right. Which, brings, which brings me back to my other point of how Diddy feels so sad that he didn't marry Kim Porter. And that's what happens to a lot of men and stuff. Like every guy I've ever dated in, in my life that meant something to me or whatever have all now come back in my life and it's and some of them are married so it's not on a romantic thing and some of them are got girlfriends and stuff but they all come back to say they sorry or, or apologize or want me to be friends with them and stuff and the few that have come back on a romantic romantic tip i can't get back with them because i'm resentful of them mm, i i can understand that part of what happened in the past no, you didn't pick me. And oh, now, uh, okay. You didn't pick me. That's not yeah. our kids. That's not our family. You know, yeah. whatever. No, you want to come back around when if you're divorced or, or whatever and not happy in your relationship. Now you want to come back around to me and I'm too resentful of you to move forward with you. Right, right. Yeah. That, you that's one thing that keeps me from being their friends. friends. Have that <laughs> happened to any of y'all? Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, I would say... I, during Corona and when Kobe died and during Corona, I've heard from all my ex-boyfriends, well, except the last one, but all of them. And we cool. I talk to them often. They check on me. Hey, I'm just checking it. Married kids, whatever it is, just checking on me. Cool. You know what I'm saying? And, it, you know, they, I sorry I treated you bad. You, mm. it, you're such a nice person. You were good to me. And, you know, I, you know okay. and, and I'm not even bitter that they chose somebody else because I'm kind of glad it wasn't me now that I look back. But you know, uh, but no, but I'm cool with I would say I would, 95 percent and still talk to it's like they still check up on me. I mean, I mean, come, I mean, a couple of them be trying to holler, be trying to like you know, get over whether they're uh married or not, but I don't get down like that, so you know. Well, I don't have you? a lot of exes that I uh that that left me. <laughs> uh -huh. I left them, so I show ain't calling them up. Oh, yeah, do I don't call. Call. Do they, have they tried to contact you at any point? No, no, <laughs> no, mm -mm. no, no, <laughs> she, she, no. She's a Leo. She's a Leo. When they when they done, they don't fuck with you no more and stuff or right. whatever. So it's just, done. But have you guys ever called went back and called somebody that you did done wrong? Because I have never done that. Because I don't think I've ever really done anybody wrong. In my opinion, maybe they got something else to say. But I've never come and said, hey, I got to apologize to you for what I did to you and blah, blah, blah. I've never had to do that. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Like I ain't running that. around being mean like that. Yeah. I, I, try to bow out. I try to bow out before it gets to that point. You know right. what I mean? Right. Try to if, if I got to go there, we don't need to see it. If you're right. smart, you seeing some of this stuff. And you might want to take some time back, take a step back and go, you know what? I got to get out of here. Right. I, I, can't, I, might, I might hurt this nigga somehow, somehow. Right. I have, I have one guy that I dated in the 11th grade, and I always say he's the one I let get away. Oh, but, uh, what, but what do you know at 15, oh, 16, you know, 15, 16 years old? I have one know? of those, too. I have a question. You know, and I'm to huh? Has Hope asked the, the men why they didn't pick her? I'm curious what the feedback was that she received. That's a good question. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I never really asked them why they I didn't know, pick I'm me. I know. I'm kind of like, duh. That's like a that would be the question if they come back. I'll be like, look, now that you got you back, let me ask well, you. I'm trying to come back. Yeah. We well, just okay, one guy that I did. okay, one guy that I dated. Mm -hmm. And he, I was seven years older than him, or whatever. And he didn't came back twenty years. And he, but he had just had a baby with the girl, mm -hmm. and so uh. he met me and wanted to be with me. But he felt conflicted because he just had had a baby with this girl, mm -hmm. but they weren't together. And so he, he, and then it was like I was working on my career, and he was intimidated by all of that me working on my comedy and my career and being around all yeah. those people and stuff. So he was very insecure with that. And so, 
you know, he just left one day. I went out of town and he just left in the, like before I could get back. Uh, and, you know what? Then you bring that up. You're right. That if I have gotten any feedback is that I'm intimidating. I, mm. like, I, I, I got it too. I have it like I'm, I'm too strong or too. I, you act like you don't uh. need me. And it, it is just not true. I mean, I, I can say in my last relationship, I probably called him for everything. Like when I felt like he could be there for me, but I just, I, I don't, I, I hated hearing that because I, I never wanted to give off that perception that A, I don't need a man. B, I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm too independent to, or, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, that really hurt my feelings. To be honest, I with know, you. and I tried not to be that way, Pam, and stuff. So the one guy, so he tried to come back after five kids, and he all broke the fuck down. He married the girl, and she, at the time he married her, I think he's married to her. <laughs> broke the fuck down. <laughs> yeah, twenty years he'd been married to her. She was sick. She had been sick nineteen of them, so he had been taking care of her and all of them kids for the nineteen years they've been together. And he said to me, "Had I stayed with you." He was a football player or was trying to be. He said, I could have been in the NFL by now, you know, and I could have had a better life. Mm -hmm. So, but he said, Regrets. I was so intimidated by, by who you were and where you were going. And I was jealous and stuff, a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of that intimidation. And like you, Pam, I don't know what they're intimidated about. And I don't know what it is to, to make them want to feel needed. So, so are they saying we got to change who we are? Do we have to dumb ourselves down? Do well, we see, have that's to... what they want. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing and, it. And most women do try to please. They try to change themselves, and the end, they end up being regretful and not the person that they are in the relationship. Right. But Maybe. you have to take your own rules into account. If you got rules for yourself, take them into account. Make right. them work for you if you set them damn rules. But but what is it in men? What is it in men that they? I guess they, especially now, they they have a. I'm not gonna say epiphany. It could be epiphany, or could it be a reflection <laughs> on life to say, Pam was a good woman. I fucked up, or right. or you know. I, I, or I don't mind hearing that, but at the time, you choose this and you choose that hurts because yeah, I try but, not to be. But, but but that but yet they <coughs> say they want strong independent women and they want this and I say oh you want an independent woman you want a strong woman you want a woman who got her own shit you want a woman who got a car her own place you a goddamn lie because all of my girlfriends who have that are single right right it so that's not what you want and see my mother raised me that a man was a a want and not a need mm -hmm. and so I think that's where and then I think that to me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm around a lot of boss bitches, like you're a boss bitch, Monique's a boss bitch, Lunell's a boss bitch. I I hang out with a lot of boss bitches type of women who can take care of themselves and, right. and, and do whatever. And so when you cry or or you lean on a man, to me that shows weakness to me. Me too. It, I, it I, does. That's how I feel. I used to be like that up until this last one, and then I, I was really I, I was really me, and, and apparently that wasn't good enough, you know. So I don't know. You know, and so I'm just like I, I I I don't I don't I don't know what I'm like DMS. What you niggas want from a bitch? Okay, what do y'all want? Okay, Mia a Rabia says, I've heard exes say that they're intimidated by me professionally or my drive. But my question is, Nick, who is going to take care of me when you leave? My independence right. is what attracted you to me in the first right. damn place. Right. right. So and so does that go back to our first conversation of the black man? Because, I mean, really, that's all I'm interested in. I'm, I'm just going to keep it real. And, and, um, it, and it does, is that because you, you were saying that they, they don't protect us or they don't, you know, whatever. Is that because be we're so strong? They don't want to be respectful. That's how I feel. And that's something. Emotionally, too. Emotionally, too. It's like you can't even cry on a nigga's shoulder when you don't feel, you know, whatever. And the strong people, we're strong. Sometimes we're, we broke down and we're depleted and stuff because we give to so many people. We give and give and give and give. And sometimes we're tired. And I can't even be a shoulder to cry on for some of these men because one it shows weakness or 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 I, so i think in my mind and stuff or whatever and so I, I you know and i've dated some guys i got another one i dated when i was um 18 years old and 19 and i had just broke up with my son's father and me and him were we were good we were good 
and I got pregnant. And when I decided I was going to keep my son, I told him. Mm-hmm. And he was young at Howard University and, you know, whatever. And so we broke up, you know, because of that. And I kept right. my baby and stuff or whatever. And um, and so years later, we still remained friends what? and stuff afterward. And then years later, we said, okay, if by the time we're 40, if, we, if we're not married to somebody, we're going to marry each other. That was our thing. Oh, yeah, I did that. Called him, what we're doing. He wasn't ready. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm at 53. Okay, so about... Four years ago, when I turned 50, mm-hmm. he's still not married. We cool. And we were saying, okay, we're going to see. He lives in the Bay Area. We're going to see if we got something, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm going to come down. Right. Come down to LA for work. And I mean, he's a brilliant dude. I love this dude. And he's so smart. I would listen to him because I trust him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some of these men, I don't, I don't tr- I'm not going to listen to because I don't trust them. I don't right, trust right. them with my heart. I don't trust them with the, the stuff. I know they're jealous. I know they're envious. I know all of that. They're haters and stuff. So mm-hmm. I have to trust you to in order to follow you. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. And so, and so, and I trust this dude. And and so he, okay, so the, y'all got to go back to the point of when I was pregnant with my son, he was in how, going to scout, college at Howard. He didn't want to be the father thinking us be a family. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now we trying to work on getting back together and things like that. Mm-hmm. There was another girl that he said, look, if it between you and this other girl that I used to date, that if I were to get with somebody, that's who it would be. But I'm leaning towards you, Hope. Okay, so we're going to talk. Okay, about wait, let's, wait, let's just stop that portion right there. How do you feel about him telling you just that part? Don't even tell me that. I mean, what am I? I'm so I'm supposed to wait to be chosen. What kind of shit is that? Right. So, but this is the kicker. So me and him talking, we're going to work it out. We're talking, we're going to, you know, see each other. We're going to do this or whatever. So the other girl gets pregnant by his frat brother. Mm-hmm. But the brother, don't know, the other guy don't Messy. know what to do with her and the baby. Mm-hmm. So she calls up my friend and me and him are now trying to talk. She calls him up and says, if I decide to keep this baby, will you help me raise it? Whoa. He calls me and tells it. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Pump the brakes, nigga. We're <laughs> supposed to be working on something. We're right. supposed to. Now, mind you, his backstory is he's adopted. He doesn't know who his birth parents are. So, uh, oh, so his, his mother and father adopted him and raised him. So I know your story. I know where you've been. So, you know, this is your. And then he never had kids of his own. Okay. Wow. So now here's That's his fine. opportunity. This is opportunity to do the same thing, but you didn't want to do that with me 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Right. You get what I'm saying? He yeah. didn't want to do that with me yeah. when I was with my son. So he ends up, I said, well, we can help raise the baby together. You don't have to be in the house with her. Are you in love with her? You're going to be with her like a couple? He was like, I don't know. She just asked me and sprung this on me. And then I was like, okay, well, what's going on? I'll keep you in the loop. We don't even know she's going to go to fir- full time. I'll keep you here we are, four years later. And he's still not happy, and he treads back a little bit here, a little bit there to me. When he comes to town, he takes me to wow. dance. He doesn't cross the line much, but you could tell. And one day he cried because I was like, you didn't, still didn't pick me. And he cried and was like, I know. And all of them just say they fucked up. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Wow. I mean, wow. it's a trip because I almost want to bring a man in here and, and, and uh, get their opinion. And I can't right. uh, Derek. Um, if I see you, Lee, can you come on and, and speak for men? Because I would love to hear what a man has to say. Because really, we're raising all these questions, but uh, to me, a man has to answer them. A man has they to do. answer them. Yeah, question. they really do. It's messy being in the situation. Uh-huh. Yeah, a man has to answer. And as far as being intimidating or anything like that, I, I get that all the time. Time. I'm fucking five feet tall. Where the fuck are y'all intimidated? <laughs> right. <laughs> for, 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 I think for me and uh, probably for all three of us, it's our mouths because we not we gonna tell you what we how we what to do how to do it. That I mean I I mean I try to pull back that bossiness or that you know what, what they would probably call it aggressiveness or whatever. But part of it is our mouths. But I, <laughs> I, I, I am who I am and I can't change that. I hear that all the time. Some guys like if you would just shut the fuck up, you'd be all. Right. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Me too. Okay. <laughs> I'm sending D cause if he's in there still. I'm gonna I'm sending this link. Well, see, I'm that one though. 
I, I'm that chick that I'm going to do everything for you. And I'm, I'm that ride or die chick. I'm that girl like, if you want to go to the moon, I'm calling the moon bureau. I'm that rider. I got you, baby. So if I feel a certain way, why yeah. can't we talk about it? And so right. men think that just because we disagree with y'all, y'all always think we're arguing. Right. And it's not. They, not yeah, arguing. they never want to talk about anything. I just don't agree with you. That doesn't make us arguing. <laughs> they I know. It's like, you're so negative. You're like, what? I just... I just bringing in something like what? I mean, I'm just. It's I can't trip. have a different. Of, I can't have a difference of opinion than your than you. Right. right. I, yeah. No, you can't. Obviously, you can't. I because if you're still in here, um, I sent you. Look, I'm gonna send you the text. Okay. Because I because mean, here's the thing. I've been asking that question for a while for years, and I never get that answer. We're all just like, I don't know. Right, we don't know. And I'm like, they don't I never want to talk about nothing. They want everything to be peachy keen, but right. they causing all these problems. Right, Mo. Um, see more wants to know how long have you been married? Thirteen years. Thirteen years. Okay. And we in the thirteen inch. <laughs> I'm. I've been married. I was Are married you? for five. I was married for five. Mm -hmm. Thirteen it's years. And it's a. It's a. It is a job that you don't get paid for not the correct amount of money <laughs> it's, 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 so funny. it's so funny single people want to be married and married people want to be single it's yes. so crazy no, it's so, no I we don't want to be married. single i don't want to be single i want my man to understand right <laughs> after 13 years uh -huh. we just want them to understand and right. they don't so, you know, they say you can do bad all by yourself. Well, I can get mad all by my damn self. I don't need anybody helping me get upset. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, is this the itch? They either figure it out or they don't. And if they don't, they won't. I mean, it's but up what to you to change your time. But, you know, what's the issue? Because every week you come on here and complain about your marriage and stuff, but then <laughs> every week you don't get better. And stuff or whatever. Let so, me tell you something. I am in love. Uh -huh. And I'm not complaining about my marriage. I am dealing with a real situation in my marriage. And yeah. it's a lot. So I go with the wind. And sometimes the wind is blowing really harshly. So I'm madly in love. But I'm really dealing with a, ma a major situation that caused a change, a total flip in our marriage. And each thing that's happened in our marriage has been outside entities. It's nothing that he has caused directly himself. And I'm a little mad. I'm, I'm tired of these daggers coming in at us when we just trying to love each other the way that we know how to love each other. Mm -hmm. And we do a damn good job of it, but we have been inundated with so many different outside entities that makes it hard. And you just fight. You keep fighting for it. Yeah, but Mo, you're strong enough and, 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 and intelligent enough and smart and 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 Johnny on the spot with things that this whatever's been going on, and I know the situation and stuff. But whatever's going on is that you know the outside entities and stuff that you could put a stop to some of this stuff, can't you? And I have, <laughs> <laughs> but that's tiresome. That's yeah, mental. Yeah. It's draining. I am tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, up but you signed up for better or worse. But you signed up for better or worse. And and remember, I, 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 I took your works. quote. When you said that to me, I, we were talking, and you said to me, and I took that quote right to him when you said, and something you said, it's for better or worse, and sometimes worse is better. And believe yeah. me, mm. we have come out of these worse things so much better. So you're totally right. But I'm telling you, when you're in the thick of it, it is some harsh shit. And I don't have a lot of people on my side. I don't have a lot of people in my position. I am a woman with no kids, didn't plan on having kids, didn't try to make a kid, tied my tooth, did everything I could to make sure. And now I've caught up, but I'm also a stepchild. And I had some man mm. love me to death like he was my dad. So mm. I'm not going to take that away from these children. I was put here for that. I'm going to give them that. But they were there when you signed up to be with him. It's not like he went out and had him and brought him into to the marriage and stuff. When you got with him, he yeah, had Yeah, when I got with him, there was a mother and a father involved taking care of children. Right? But when I got the, with him. But it comes with the territory. So just when you get with somebody and then their circumstances change and stuff, you don't not, not sign up for it anymore just because it's not what you 
thought it was going to be. Yeah. Well, here I am 13 years later. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I have worked through it, but it's still happening because, again, I don't mind putting it out there because yeah, my husband lost a part of his limbs. Mm -hmm. Now, we like our nails done. You think I'm going to be real cool if I lost part of my limb? Yeah, we would be. I because take that into consideration. You know why? Because we're women. We're women and right. we can adapt better to stuff. Men just... It's we a part can. of their manhood. It's a part of their ego. That could be his jack-off fingers. You don't know shit. <laughs> no, he kept those. Look, he kept those. <laughs> That's the first thing I said. Nigga, you can still hold your dick. We good. Okay. <laughs> and everything. But we can, we can adapt. Men equate <clears throat> everything about them to their, to their manhood and everything. Right, right. You know, everything is about, you know, it, you know, is my dick big enough? Is my this or that? You know, everything. Or my pocketbook, or my car, or yeah, my you know, yeah. yeah, and stuff. And so, whereas we, we, we don't care, you know, right. or whatever. But so, my thing is that I guess what I'm saying is that I am very seriously, and Mo, I don't know if you have, but Pam, I think you have. You could tell your story. I'm considering dating outside of my race. I've never done that. Don't get me wrong, brothers. I love, I, <laughs> I love the black man so much. Mm -hmm. I love the black man so much, but I, I want that love in return. And I just don't know if my brothers right. are capable of it. And I see white men loving, I see white men loving us differently and better. You guys, um, so, um, I've dated at least four of them. <laughs> I have. It wasn't. It, 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 it's, 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 it's just different. Like, okay. I'm freezing. I'm sitting right under the air. Okay. Uh, I'm having the worst time today with my video. I know. I see all over the place. But um, giving me the blues. But it's I, I really it's don't bad. think the grass is greener on, on the other side. I really don't. Because I think you're going to have not. issues. I think you're going to have, like, the ones that I did were, like, I mean, I don't want to go into graphic detail. They were, were, like, really, No, go really, into graphic detail. Like, no, like, freaky. Like, they were, like, on some other shit that I was, like, I don't, you know, like, the the, the choking, the pulling the hair. Then, you know, we black, we got weaves. Like, you don't know. Oh, like, yeah, we, my like, hair. can't relate. <laughs> I like, relate all to our I like all that. I like all that. So you're not pulling my hair now because they may not be mine at the time. Well, hopefully you, you step on through to okay. the other side. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank y'all. I'm telling you guys, I was not a pleasant. All, okay, all, so like, all like for instance, what happened when you was what? Did he treat you nice? I'm talking about no. that. I'm not talking no, about they were just. Part. They seemed like they were just sexually deviant to me. That's what I felt like. Oh. How old were you? Well, How they may have been. Well, I was in my probably early twenties, and you know, I mean, through my twenties. You, yeah, you hadn't had your sexual, you hadn't had your sexual revolution yet, because again, our mama and our grandparents don't let that boy touch you. You know, boys are nasty. Right. Don't let this boy say, keep your panties up, keep your panties up, your dress down. Don't let no boy. So we, in the back of our head. We have thought that. So now in our 40s and 50s, we have deprogrammed ourselves from that to be able to really experience sex for the beautiful thing that it is. Well, we have been taught our right. whole life that it's nasty. Well, so I'm like, just no, saying, what no, do you mean? He pulled your hair. Okay, what's so bad about don't that? Don't do it, don't do it. What are you he might have been a fetish, Pam. He, he, he I, charged you. Like, it just don't look the same to me. You know, you I mean, never had a brother to choke you or pull your hair. No, I have been pulling it, but not a choking. No, I mean it's not even really about that. It was just about the like, you know how they say black women are aggressive to me. I felt like I was just like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because I just felt like it was just, mm, I, I couldn't deal. I'm sorry. I mean, Maybe. but what? Be specific, like, did he, did he try to eat your booty hole or blow in no, your booty? No, I mean, like, the first time I, like, we had went out on a date, the first thing he did was take off my shoes and just start sucking my toes. Okay, fine. I do oh, like yeah, that. You said shit that we like. Uh, no, but I like right, it, but, the wrong thing. but I just, at that time, I don't even know you like that. Like, yeah, that's well, the first well, thing you, you, know, know, you don't know. You don't know about sucking toes and how many pressure points you have there and erroneous spots you have in your fucking feet. 
Don't make me pull up the grid. Look, don't make me pull up the foot grid. <laughs> now, uh, Derek, Derek says that he's a black man and he eats pussy and ass and all that. So stop it. So we we we're he's saying that we comparing the white man to the black man is, is bullshit. I think that's what he's saying. No, no, we're not. What we're saying is we want to look and see what they do on that side of town and try to say, hey, is this the type of love that I? And been missing and what I want, mm -hmm. or do I need to jump on over here to black men and let them keep tripping all the motherfucking time? <laughs> <laughs> I have of it, I think, is who we're attracted to, too. I think you attract kind yeah. of what you're putting out. So, uh, yeah. I've always been a firm believer in that, and I, I feel like I must uh, not be, then I must not be shit. Then I, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I know I wasn't to a, a, to a certain point, I wasn't shit. Like, I'm gonna tell you. I ain't never been a I ain't never been a not shit woman. I've always been a great person. I'm a ride or die chick or whatever, but it's something else wrong with me, evidently. <laughs> Before my husband, I used to get all the guys that just want to just take you around like a dog. Like they just want to take me around. What the fuck? What what, what good are, what, get, fun to be what is in it for me? You're fun to be around, though. You're like the life of the party. You're fun to be around. I like being around you because you're fun. You're entertaining. I can sit back and be like, okay, Mo's going to entertain everybody, and I can just chill and, and this and that. So that that's probably why, if you're the same person you are now back then, I can see why people would want to take you around because you, you, you you know you like to have fun. You, you're social. Yeah, you but you, if you're interested in a man, you don't want to instantly just be his friend all the time. Oh, yes, yes, my homegirl, my homegirl. And then you got to turn your head and go, okay, he's not interested. Now I got to make sure when I come through, I'm on homegirl status. I, I got my homegirl mind on. You got to remove what you was feeling and thought was going to be. But every time he come get you, it, we, we just going to go, come on, let's go around. While I'm so, he so, and high high in for everybody. Yeah. So but you said, you my said we're not comparing. Thank you, everybody. Okay. We're not comparing the black man to the white man. No. At the end of the day, we're comparing how people treat There's you. There's no comparison. Oh. <laughs> now, oh, you and I spoke on this earlier. Rabia says, can you tell if, uh, let's say, a white man genuinely likes, loves you, or uh, as opposed to uh, you being a fan? You being an experiment. experiment. You being an experiment. And you know what? And that's what I think that's probably what I was feeling. I, I just feel like there was no you know what I'm talking about going through, looking, you know, right. it's been through a connection. It was more right. like, oh, it's a black girl, so let me, let's see if she's going to turn flips and, you know what I'm saying? That's what I felt like. I was cool. I'm, I'm cool with it. I ain't, I ain't never going there no more. Mm -mm -mm. Well, I'm going to tell you what. While we, we are we're working through what we're working through, I'm still very glad to be quarantine with my husband he's very tolerable I mean 13 years he keeps to himself he does his thing you know he's all of us are still working like I said even my stepson who's home he's 18 he's working from home he got a little part-time job at Vons uh the little girl's doing her school adamantly her grades are still up so you know we're, we're making it work we're not trying to kill each other and and we're, we're coinciding with each other. We're making sure we're, we're communicating. We just had a situation. The kid is going to be 19. He just got a new car. His friends came through. They ran around Inglewood smoking, come back, you know, crap all in the car. My husband almost fell through the roof. But I had to tell him, you need to teach him the now the level he's on. Because when he got his first car, he was a 17-year-old who did smoke, we did do drugs, and wasn't out late at night. He's on another level. You need to talk to him about that level. And he did. But we worked through it because we talked about it. Yeah. I came at my husband on this level and he was on a parent level. And I think that's how we we, you know, it come was. together. Yeah. You know, when my son, I, when I he got his first car, I taught my son how to drive. You know, I took him to get his, you know, his driver's license and everything. And oh. I just tell my son. I don't talk at him or I just tell him the consequences of the actions. Bam, In other words, that part. I say, like a car, your life depends on how you drive this machine. Mm -hmm. And, and you got to not drive only for you, but you have to drive for everybody on everybody the road. Everybody else. 
Yeah. Okay. Right. And and so that's what I, I taught him those things. And wherever you're trying to get through to, if you don't leave early enough time, it, it ain't no use of speeding. My son drives like an old woman sometimes or whatever. <laughs> and then having, and then I when I sent I sent him also after I taught him how to drive, I sent him to driving school so he could see those films. When I was in ah. high school, before they took it out of schools, you know, the driving right. stuff. Right, they do that? Those films scared the shit out of me. Those mm -hmm. fucking films with people getting their heads decapitated and, and, and everything. That's, they, that's they, they the film scared but the they shit out the of me. But yes. they do the job. They do the job. It did the job and stuff. And I think that they should bring that back in school they so these do. kids can see those films. And now with the texting and driving and things like that or whatever and stuff. And so I just tell him the consequences. Like one time when he was young, um, I answered, he had his own phone in his room. I answered it and somebody was calling because he's selling ecstasy pills. Mm. <laughs> I didn't go on. All I told him, Pam, was, okay, they are giving 25 to life for every pill they catch you with. Now mm. do you. Now do you. <laughs> right. Do the math. Bye. Do the math. Four pills, a hundred years. So you do you. If that's okay with you, and if you're willing to do that, you know, go to jail for that amount of time for stuff, then I, who, do you. Do you. Okay. So Derek, the one I was trying to get on the phone, and I'm going to talk him in the next week coming on with this, because we got to have a male opinion, I believe. Just make that's it. That's fine. That'll be good. That'll, that'll be a good we do, thing. especially with the topics that we'll have. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, every once in a while, I don't got to be all the time, but he said, Pam Hope, on the real, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, you two beautiful women need to find a man that understands the entertainment industry that you are in and not be insecure in their feelings. Well, okay. I've tried really to date men in the entertainment. I've tried to date men in the entertainment industry too, and then it becomes like a competition sometimes. Or, or you know, if I get something they don't get it, mm -hmm. then they are upset. You know, and I see. You know, a lot of celebrities get together that are in the business. You see that uh, uh, Angela Bassett and, and Courtney Vance, and you know, and Samuel Jackson and Latoya. But look at mm -hmm. look at like Paulette and, and and Denzel. She took a back seat on her career to yes. push his career. I yes. wonder why. Was that a conversation they had? Like me and you right. both came out here and I and trying to have these babies. I want you to be the fan. So she gave up what she loved because they met in acting school. She mm -hmm. gave right. what she loved to support and push her man. Mm -hmm. And this and that. So, so I, I don't know what I'm willing to give up, you know, whatever. Um, I, you know, one guy, the love of my life, we were engaged and we're going to get married and we would stay together like five years. And he just told me, he said, I would have held you back because he needed so much because mm -hmm. he was in and out of drugs or whatever. He just said, I right. would have held you back. I was insecure. And so a lot of it is, a lot of it is insecure, mm -hmm. is insecurity. So am I dating down too much? I just like who I like. I don't care if you got money. I don't care if you got yeah, this. Yeah, I like I'm that too. I like who I like. See, I'm the same way. I'm yeah. the same way. Because I don't got to get baller. You ain't got to get my, buy new purses and that. I don't have my name down. I can afford everything. I don't have my name down. I can afford everything that I need. Right. Everything. Right. Or right. one. Right. Throw it here. And if you give me a gift, well, thank you, boo. <laughs> Turn me on, but you know, but I mean, you know, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and I don't need a purse. I got so many purses, I don't have no place to put a fucking purse. Girl, I, I, I got bags of purses. I don't even get to pull out and pull no more. Where the fuck I'm gonna go? What right. we do? Back I, to I don't myself? need no shoes. I don't need clothes. I don't need perfume. I don't need jewelry. What I need is, and I think this is what we're all kind of looking for in a nutshell. Black women will push a shopping cart down Crenshaw with your fucking ass. <laughs> yes. We just want your time, motherfucker. Now we want your time. Just be mine. Just be mine. Right. We want your time. It's that simple. It's be that devoted simple. to me. <laughs> I'll be I'll be homeless with you. I'll be a bum with you. I'll I'll I'll, I'll sleep at your mama house with you. I'll do whatever with did you. Did that. And we did it on the floor while she was in the bed asleep. Yeah, Thank we did. <laughs> okay, so I, used Thanks, Mom. Guy, I used to date a guy. He didn't even have hot running water. He was stealing it from the neighbor, running a tube and the lights down. <laughs> okay, that's a bit much. In the attic and shit. And, and you was right, right there with him. What you hope? You was like, I'm right there with the nigga trying to show him I'm a rider. I'm right. right. Never I'm judging. That's what we do. That's what we do. 
Yeah. So, so what if we ask you where you going, motherfucker? We are <laughs> ride or die. <laughs> and I can't ask you where we you want going. you to come back. <laughs> you gotta put shopping carts with you. <laughs> right. I can't ask you where you going with Tyrone Raggedy ass. What the <laughs> fuck? Right. I done slept on your mama floor and did it to you right. while she right. was in the room. Right. right. I, you know, so I, I don't, I don't know what they want, but I like that question with. Uh, uh, that I'm going to ask some of these men, why didn't you pick me? I and know. A lot of, yeah, we had a lot of give you a lot of, fluff, a lot of No, I had one guy tell me after 30 I, years. I, 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 I had one guy tell me after 30 years. I said he tried to come back, you know, whatever. We talked and stuff. And the reason I won't fuck with him is because when we were kicking it, it wasn't, it wasn't all that pleasant to me. And then... Um, I ended up getting pregnant for that dude, but I never told him, and I got rid of that baby and stuff. Well, I remember whatever. you said that. And you so talked now, about him. Mm-hmm. And so now he's come back. I didn't see him on social media. We haven't physically met, but the problem I have with him is that he he fat now. He not as fine as he was. <laughs> <laughs> he got some some footballs. Love him, right? <laughs> he's huge. He's huge. He's huge. Like and, like big big. Yeah, we're, I mean, just the the point, he's not floppy big linebacker big, but he ain't like he was. Now, of course, that's not thirty years ago. But I have always been, and you know, I've always been a full figure woman, and this and that. And even now, you know, I'm not thin, thin, but I am a size ten. But I, I don't like fat men. I've never liked fat men. They like you know, me. Talk about it in my act. You got titties. I got titties. I might as well get a bitch. What the fuck is that ass? For? I don't do fat men, and I feel like they discriminated against me. Fuck it. I'm gonna discriminate against y'all. I don't uh, like. I don't want to be with a man who has little children either. I and that's my thing. And we we should probably resume that next week because uh, the, at our ages. Yeah, I got some criteria. I got some criteria. If we have the nerve to have that as a criteria, that's what I want to know. Yes. I don't think at 50 you should still be having fucking babies. You no, should. I don't think that right. So are you saying that you don't want to date a guy with kids or, or like little babies or? Little kids, like three and four and five. Yeah, they need to be grown. Yeah. No little. I'm on grandkids yeah. and stuff or whatever. So. And I'm not having any more kids and stuff. And I just want to be able to, I don't want you to can't come over because you got to, you got to, you got your kids this weekend. I hate that excuse. I hate that excuse. And, and so I don't, I'm, so I'm discriminating. They discriminate, a lot of them discriminated against me when I was a single mom. You know, even though I made sure that any guy I dated, that it was never about my son and I wasn't looking for a father. He got a raggedy ass daddy and stuff. So I never was looking for them to be a father to my son. You don't need another raggedy ass. He got a raggedy ass daddy and stuff. So I never was looking for that. But, you know, but a lot of them did discriminate against me because I had a son. And some I discriminated against them because they couldn't understand me being a mom and having to be at home with my kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm in the same boat. I'm discriminating against them now. I got I because I know what I want now. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the difference, Pam. Yeah, we should be. We should be. Uh, having a criteria now and being choosy because we know what we want and we're on the second wave of our lives now. Yeah, we've we been You're on a different level. level. You're on yeah. a whole nother level and they say it gets harder every level. Yeah. You know, so definitely. So I, I, I just, it's coming. I had my, I had my chart read yesterday and she said he's coming. Oh, really? Now, I, I, okay, well, that'd be another topic for another day. Okay, but. we'll write that down. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you guys, just, uh, we we went way over today, but it's probably about oh, really? uh, ten minutes. Oh, it seems like it was so so fast. Yeah, it did go fast. It really did. So tell them where they can uh, find you, Mo. Where they can. Hey, you can reach me at Much Mo's and Instagram at Much Mo's and Monique Patrice on Facebook. You know what? I, I'm trying to tag you on something today, and I said, "Well, Monique Patrice, they don't even." Say, I said, "That ain't her," and it kept coming up. I said, "Well, forget it. I can't tag her." I don't know. <laughs> Monique Patrice Pruitt is my name on Facebook. It's okay. my old name. <laughs> oh, where can they find you? You got um, to find out. me on Hope, Hope Dot Flood um, on Instagram, Hope Flood on Facebook, HopeFlood.com. You know, whatever. And y'all send us some topics of things that you want to talk about. And I just right. want to say this one last thing. Uh, Pam and I 
uh, created this podcast, What the Female for Women to, for us to address issues that we have in relationships and men and, and talking about women's shit. Nobody's doing this like we are doing it. And so whatever topic we choose to talk about, it ain't for you to say, uh, don't talk about that topic or whatever. But <laughs> it's our podcast, okay? This is our junior. We okay? talk about what else. Yeah, if, if you don't like it, just don't tune in to our shit or whatever. And there's a difference between <laughs> critiquing and opinions and, and all this stuff. We don't need the critiques. We are working this out on our own. If you can help us to be better, that's fine. But telling us we shouldn't have talked about a certain topic um, yeah, that ain't for you to say. We don't talk yeah. about every <laughs> motherfucking thing on our <laughs> fucking podcast. This is a show where we, we never know what we're going to say. Huh? That's oh, right. This is a show where we never go, know what we're going to say or go. So, yeah, is what it is. It is what it is. So, if I cuss you out on our page, then that's what the fuck you're going to get. And stuff like that. <laughs> and and uh, like us on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, if you please subscribe. <laughs> Like us on Facebook. Well, okay, so you can find me at Nikki Pam on everything, two Ks, and then follow us on What the Female Twenty on Facebook and What the Female Twenty on IG. And I'm and working if you on like the- what we're doing. You know, running some coins and stuff. We get on here and everybody trying yeah. to make a little. Money. I know Pam ain't working, more work, and I, you know, I'm hustling Girl. stuff. But Pam, what's our what's our money thing? Our cash apps and all that shit. What the female? I mean, what WTF email? E-M-A-L-E. What the fee yeah. is. So is it the money sign? Is the dollar sign? Dollar sign, dollar sign, what the female, pretty much. And, and W-T all, female. Uh-huh, and all that. know what I'll do. Cash at. You know okay. how to find us. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to talk about everything you like. You like le- all during the week, if you guys go back and listen or leave us some, some subjects you guys want to talk about or whatever, we'll, yeah. we'll go through. I'll get them for sure, and we'll go through them and We'll, st- we'll start talking about it. And then I'm going to try, like I said, I'm D de- cause I'm going to make you come on next week just for a little while. You don't have to be on the whole time, just a little bit. So we have because we're going to go and ask these questions. I'm actually going to do the research because I really want to know. I'm going to call everybody that have checked on me during Corona and COVID and say, why did you pick me? I'm just curious. There you go. I want to find and out. And, right. go back and-, and you know why, you know why I say that, Pam, my girlfriend that I, my mailbox is, so we're going to start an actual, I used to do a thing called Sister Assistant. Once a month, we would get together at my house and we would just talk and we would cry and hold each other and just yes. talk about things and issues and stuff like that. And she wants to do that. And she, there was a guy that she liked and she just asked him, she said, why didn't you pick me? He's still single and everything. And he was just like, it ain't you, it's me. So they'll, they'll, they'll hit you with that bullshit. But yet you try to holler at the lady next door. And stuff. So it, it ain't. It just be honest to say it ain't. I just I'm not attracted to you. Mm-hmm. And you know what? They don't want to say it because they feel like they hurting your feelings. Men are just the weakest things in the world. Just fucking say it because we appreciate that shit. And then I can move on. I can move on. I've had guys tell right. me, you know that. And we know you why know we're moving on. Too, yeah, I've had guys tell me, you know, you're a little too fat for the kind of women I like. Okay. Or I don't like women who wear weaves. Okay. I don't like women who wear nails. I like more of a natural woman or something like that. Okay. I get that. You you like a type. You have a type. And I don't fit within that type. And I get it. And then I've had guys that I wasn't in that type that they fuck with me anyway and was like, oh my God, you're amazing and stuff. I should have, I shouldn't have discriminated against you. Yep. All right, so we got some good. So next week, same time, you guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in. All right, ladies. Rest of the week and weekend. All right, y'all. Bye.